The Dark Dynamite Satchel is here. And it's basically a new consumable that's a large dynamite bundle. This plays unlike anything else we currently have in the arsenal. So the Dark Dynamite is a consumable. So you can take up to four of them and they cost 200 to purchase. So they're definitely on the pricey side being the most expensive consumable we currently have. Once in game, you can take them and place them anywhere, either on the ground or the wall. Now, once they're placed, you can go ahead and channel Dark Sight and choose the satchel that you want to detonate. After a brief charge in Dark Sight, they let off a blast that's identical to a big dynamite bundle. When you place it, it lets out a constant ambient whooshing kind of noise. So if you hear this, you know a dynamite satchel is nearby. Now it's pretty loud, so it's going to be quite noticeable. So let's see how loud the dynamite satchel actually is. When can you start noticing it's there? When I'm right up next to it, it's actually pretty loud. So let's start backing away and see where it's no longer readily noticeable. There, I saw 26 meters. Okay, so it's about 25 meters when you're gonna be able to first start hearing it. The other thing to keep an eye out for is the uh, glowing eye on the satchel. So between the light and the constant noise, those are gonna be your indicators if a satchel is nearby. Now, I wasn't able to do any of the early testing with another player, so I didn't get to test if there's a disarm animation if another player finds the satchel. But what I do know is like other consumables, if the satchel takes damage, it will detonate. So if you spot a satchel, you can take it out. Remember, it's as big as a large dynamite bubble, so you'll wanna keep your distance. What are other ways you can deal with it? Well, let's go ahead and throw a choke bomb on there and see what that does. With the satchel choked, I cannot trigger the explosion. So as the choke bomb dissipates, let's go ahead and see if we can detonate it. Yes, so a choke bomb does not disarm it. A choke bomb just prevents that detonation. Okay, so it won't explode in the choke. How about in water? No, if it's submerged, the blast icon still shows up in dark sight, but they're not gonna let you actually detonate it. So how far away can we make that detonation happen? You can detonate your satchel out to 50 meters. How far does that actually look like in game? There, it's gonna be right about this distance. My satchel is right there, and if I back up, I can't detonate it. Forward I can. But remember, if you shoot a satchel, it will explode. And that's where things get out of hand. So if you're out of 50 meters, you can still detonate it, but you're just gonna need to shoot it, which is probably gonna be hard with regular ammo. But here's where explosive ammo comes in. The blast radius of explosive ammo will trigger the detonation on the dark satchel. So if you're gonna try and be detonating these at range, doing so with explosive ammo is gonna be significantly easier. But if explosive ammo sets off a dark satchel, does that mean they can chain react? Let's give that one a try. Here I have three satchels set down. I'm gonna trigger the one on the right. Let's see if the others are gonna explode. All three go up in flames. That means you can carpet an area with a set of dark satchels and watch them all ignite and potentially blow up a whole floor of a building. But let's see if we can push this out even further. What if we took a dark satchel and tried treating it like a red barrel, pairing it with an alert mine? Let's see if an alert mine's gonna trigger the dark satchel for an instant death trap. All right, there we have the dark satchel down next to an alert trap. Let's give it a shot. The answer is yes. We now have portable death traps wherever we want. So then the next question I have is how far away does that alert trap need to be to the dark satchel? Okay, so I tested two things. First of all, it does need to be pretty close to the alert mine in order to set it off. Secondly, uh, if you yourself are on fire, you're not gonna set the dark satchel off. It's important to note that you can actually place the dark satchel on either side of the alert mine. It doesn't have to be on the side that has the flare. And in addition, if there's a larger walkway you want to try and cover, you can actually string together multiple alert mines to extend the tripping area. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more visible, but if you put it in a spot where there's grass or mud or some other thing obscuring them, uh, you may get away with it. 
Uh, they also don't let you pick your own dark satchels up, so once they're down, they're down. Unlike traps, you can't reposition them. So there are some sneaky places where you can place these. An interesting one is on the edge of a door frame. If you place it right on the edge, when the blast goes off, it's going to destroy the door, and it'll take out any hunters that's standing near the door on the other side. This could be effectively potent if you're using it on a barred door. The fact that you can place it on either walls or floors really gives you a lot of opportunities to place it in hard to find areas. A good general spot would be, for example, above a door frame. Poison ammo will not set off the satchel. It's also important to note that throwing tools won't set off the satchel. Overall, I think the Dark Dynamite satchel is a fun addition to the game. I think all the opportunities for the great death traps or chain reaction explosions or whatnot are mitigated by two great factors. Number one is the price. It costs 200 hunt dollars for you to equip this. So, being a consumable at $200, that's going to add a steep cost to any loadout. The other thing is that noise. You can hear this pretty clearly out to about 20, 25 meters. So unless you're blindly running in the compound, you're probably gonna be aware that there's a dark dynamite at least somewhere in your vicinity. So it's probably gonna be more of a zoning tool than it is an ambush tool. I think the one thing that is probably the most compelling use for this is the fact that you can combine it with alert traps. This lets you have a death explosion trap anywhere you want. This would probably be most effective if you could judge which entrance to the outer ring of a compound a team's most likely to trap into. Especially if there's a vault involved, they would vault in, explode, and die. But if you're putting it further into the compound, more often than not, they're going to be moving at a slower pace and would at least know that it's out there. So I think the combination of its high cost and the loud sound it makes is going to prevent it from becoming an abusable strategy. When I first heard the announcements about the Dark Dynamite Satchel being a remote explosive, I didn't like it. But now that I've played around with it a bit, it reminds me kind of of the Beatles situation. When the Beatles were introduced to the game, there were a lot of people complaining about how it would ruin the game and how it was becoming, oh, the next COD now that we're adding drones. Well, in the end of things, the Beatle, I felt like, ended up being integrated relatively well. And if we're comparing this to the Beatle, I would expect long term this would have a less impact on the game uh, than the Beatle does. We already have death traps with concertina and poison put together. And so this is just another tool to create that same situation. The new way this impacts the game is now creating that powerful zoning options when people hear the sound of the Dark Dynamite bundle and then they're going to hesitate to push in a room. Either way, I would encourage you to go out and try and experiment with it. I know I'm going to try and get a group together where we take 12 Dark Dynamite satchels and alert traps and absolutely plaster a compound with it. Most likely we'll probably end up downing ourselves, but hey, might as well give it a shot. If you didn't know, you can use the partner code HUNTLAB on the Crytek store to get a discount when buying the Hunt game or DLCs. It's a great way for you to save money and support the channel. If you enjoyed this breakdown, here's another one where I do the same thing about decoys, discovering every interaction in the game the tool has.